What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. And today I want to show you guys how you can optimize Elyon to run at the highest frames per second. Um, optimization of the game will help you not only gain frames, but also help, uh, hopefully, if you have enough uh, gigabytes in your card, we may be able to actually improve your graphics. I've had a few people ask me questions on why my game looks the way it does. Um, you know, my computer specs, I'll put them in the description of this video, but I have a 1080 Ti for the Win Edition, which is an 11 gigabyte card. The more RAM you have in your card, typically the more you can process. Um, outside of that, I have an i5 10K, um, or 10th generation, I should say, and then just 32 gigs of uh, Corsair RAM. Um, with that being said, you know, this is going to be geared towards nvidia uh but the in-game settings will still apply for amd and the overall theory of how to optimize your game will still apply so if you're amd um just trying to find some equivalent information i wanted to show you all right so my in-game settings these are obviously the most important. Um, when you get in game, typically your frames are gonna be locked around 60. You want to make it unlimited because capping frames limits the amount of resources that the client is going to utilize. You don't wanna limit it because for instances when there are frame drops, you want to have the ability to have extra frames in order to account for the frame drops or the lag that occurs during a uh, more graphic intensive or processing intensive uh, times throughout the game. Okay, so brightness is not really important. That's per monitor. The character display qu quantity, I have that at no restriction because I've noticed like I've noticed like uh, like OG Terra bugs where you, like that like characters will not render in; they'll render as black shadows. So to avoid that, I just put it on no restriction. If you do see black shadows or people aren't rendering or characters are turning invi invisible, make sure you set that to no restriction and then you restart your game. Um, everything in this section is all set to normal. Airship quantity, house, gesture, quality, monster death effect, the effects. Honestly, if you're having a lot of lag, you're going to want to set the effects too low. Um, character shadows. Again, if you're experiencing lag, you're going to want to set them too low. But I like them at normal because they don't look too bad. Uh, but I don't want my processing power wasted on rendering shadows not really going to truly truly improve my gameplay real time shadow quality again if you're spending too much time uh rendering shadows according to positions and conditions in the map it's going to take up processing power so these this is why these are set at normal for me even on an 11 gigabyte card it was recommended that they were at high when i first got into the game but even still, optimization of frames is more important, especially because I stream. Character display distance, I set it at max because you want to be able to see enemies as far away as possible. Now the character effect distance, uh, I'll set to 0.6. Because I don't technically need to see all of their effects. I don't need that rendering. I just need to see the character. Um, and as they get closer, you'll start to see their effects. Uh, but again, if you notice issues where the effects aren't rendering properly or, or you're getting those bugs, I know Slayer has a lot of like effect bugs. If you're seeing that too often, you might want to bump that up to max. Um, background display distance, I have it at 0.8. I can pretty much see the entire map with this 0.8. I've never seen a reason to go higher. Um, and the game is pretty, running pretty smooth. So I'll keep it at a good medium there. Display background effects is checked. Display background decal is checked. Vegetation. 
vegetation density i have that one again you could lower this uh in order to improve your frames because vegetation is just not really necessary it just adds a bit more of a lush feel to the game the display distance i have it at medium and the shadow distance again at medium i don't need to see vegetation all the way across in the distance i just want to see the background and the landscape typically when i'm gliding is the most times where i'll see uh, i'll see like the landscape it, i can see pretty much everything so for the lighting uh the character te uh, texture all, all of these are the most important because these have to do with texture resolutions and the higher your resolutions are rendered um it if you can render them and your graphics card can actually process them successfully the higher they are rendered will actually increase your frames because higher resolution actually means like smaller like it, it appears smaller on your screen which is going to bring me to the field of view option in the game section next the field of view also kind of helps the resolution um render better on your screen um, but yeah i have all these at high like i said they affect graphics they affect the way textures appear on your screen if they're larger um, it's just going to look very blocky uh and it's not going to it's technically not going to increase your frames if your graphics card is made to handle this type of game um gross processing i have it checked field indirect light i have that set to none don't really like this setting depth of field motion blur and bloom i have this on if you don't want the bold effect of the colors you could disable bloom um i like the motion blur just because i flick my mouse a lot so it does help with the uh with the visual effects of the stream um if i disable motion blur it would be a lot harder to uh stream at the higher qualities uh, at least in theory um anti-aliasing i just have it set to normal again because anti-aliasing is going to take up a lot of processing power and this game doesn't really have a lot of truly truly like sharp uh lines anyway so anti-aliasing is not highly important though if you have a really good card you can enable it it's just the fact that like i said i'm streaming through my gpu but the less stress that i have on my gpu the better and i don't use a filter effect um for my sound you definitely want to optimize your sound but it's depending upon your headphones i'm not going to explain each of these i'm just going to scroll through them really quickly And for my game, this is really important. Uh, the camera zoom speed, I have it at half. Mouse sensitivity, 38. The camera field of view correction, if you raise this, it actually lowers your field of view and zooms you in. If you, lo if you lower it to one, it actually zooms you out and things render smaller. So this field of view correction at one actually gives you the largest field of view if you bring it up it lowers your field of view it's really odd really odd feature not sure why it's like that but yeah i don't use any of these smart lock-ons or sonic smart range uh you just don't need to if you're paying attention to your crosshair uh the effect intensity i have that set to one just because i don't want camera effect intensity camera vibration i don't want it Radio blur, I don't want it. These are really bad, really, really bad effects. You want to turn these off the second you get in the game, to be honest with you. Screen shake when using skills, turn it off. And then hiding skill effects and hiding skill effects for targets that cannot be attacked. That's pretty huge for raids. Um, Honestly. So if you're going into a large raid or a world boss with PVX, these are some options that you're going to want to disable. I wouldn't disable high skill effects, but I would disable high skill effects for players that can't be attacked because you want to still see your enemy skill effects. Otherwise, you're going to get hit by something. You don't even know it's there. 
Uh, so yeah, I would definitely use this for large scale. Um, and then the only other I have is show recommended skills during cool down. Uh, yeah. And these are my settings. Like I said, my game looks like this, uh, largely because of how my GPU captures the video game. Um, so let me hop into my NVIDIA settings here. I'm going to disable window capture and we're going to go into the NVIDIA control panel. Now I have these settings set globally. This is why some people think I have a filter on my game because it looks very warm. But what actually is happening is I don't have my NVIDIA uh, set to uh, use advanced 3D settings. Um, and another thing you could do is preference quality. Um, with either of these are going to be global settings with NVIDIA. The quality is going to largely in increase the uh, graphic render capability and the visual effects as well as the voxel and pixel effects that appear within the screen. Um, and it's going to allow you to get the most out of your graphical architecture of your GPU. Um, using the advanced settings is going to relate to the settings that you personally apply within the 3D settings. And like I said, I have mine set globally. So you can set them to be program specific. But my global settings are image sharpening is off. Ambient occlusion is off, but I have anti uh, uh, anti stop uh, stop uh, filtering at eight times. Anti aliasing is off. Uh, anti aliasing gamma correction is on. Anti aliasing mode. So again, anti aliasing is more so directed towards the outer edges of the pixels on the screen or the objects that are rendering. Um, the ambient occlusion again is it's off because it mostly relates to an NVIDIA setting that doesn't always it's not always compatible with certain engines. So I have this off just to avoid uh, any type of lighting or surface rendering issues that are going to eat away my uh, RAM or my GPU. Um, but yeah, it, this setting is not always compatible, so that's why I have it disabled. Uh, the anti aliasing setting is at four times. Uh, transparency, anti aliasing transparency is off. I have all of my GPU CUDA cores uh, set to uh, it's set to all, which is really important. All these DSR factors are off. These are not always compatible. Max frame rate, you have to make sure this is set to off. If you have a max frame rate for your games, like I said, you're limiting your frames. So you wanna make sure that you are not limiting your frames through your GPU or through the game. You never wanna limit frames, it's just it's really bad. Uh, power management mode, I have it set to optimal power because of how long I stream, but you know, you could prefer maximum performance. You want to get the most out of your card, but that may decrease the longevity of your card. So you want to be careful with that. Um, and then these these other settings are pretty self-explanatory. Shaders and texture filterings. Uh, obviously, I have the texture filtering quality set to quality. The negative LOD bias. Um, now this is actually a default setting. If you allow, it's going to basically remove certain textures for higher frames. And I don't think that's really necessary, at least with my card. 
But if you are having performance issues, uh, you could allow the negative LOD bias. Um, Threaded optimization is auto, let my GPU handle that. And the virtual, uh, I don't, this isn't even really important because I'm not playing any VR game. But those are the majority of my NVIDIA settings there. Uh, like I said, if you're on AMD, you just have to kind of convert, convert those settings to AMD. Um, but the majority of the settings should still be there. It's just going to be dependent upon uh, where you find them within your uh, graphics card settings. Another thing, though, that I want to remind you guys, always, always, always uh, update your, your drivers. Um, about every month or month and a half, typically new drivers are released, especially around big releases of games. And see, I updated my drivers literally like the 12th of this month. Uh, yeah, see here, the 12th of this month, and there's already a new set of drivers no later than like 14 days later. I'm actually going to update my GPU uh, drivers after I end this video. Good thing I checked. They don't always tell you when they come out, but yeah, typically it will be no longer than a month or a month and a half, at least for NVIDIA. Probably similar for AMD, but yeah, just stay on top of these uh, driver updates. They're really, really important to maximize your GPU, um, the, light, the life of your GPU, as well as the utilization of your GPU. Uh, and while I'm here, uh, another thing you guys are going to want to check is. Always check task manager. If you're having frames in a game, check how much your CPU is being utilized. Like I'm recording right now. My CPU is only at 75%. My RAM is only at 60. And then uh, my GPU is only at 57%. And you can tell which process is taking the majority of your resources. Obviously, it's Elion for me right now. And then Streamlabs OBS is taking a good amount. But let's say you have abnormally high utilization and you don't know why. What you can do is you come over here to the details tab and you can sort by CPU. And you can tell which processes are taking your CPU utilization. If there's anything at the top of this list that you don't recognize, you need to Google it and check what that process is utilized for. And if it, 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 I'm telling you this because it could be a virus. It could be a virus, could be a Trojan malware. Uh, if, there, if your resources are higher than usual, always check your details tab and make sure whatever is utilizing your resources, your CPU resources here, or your memory is a program that you recognize, okay? Or some trusted .exe program that is native to your OS or native to your computer. Okay, you guys, I think I've given you a lot of info as usual. If you have any questions, please drop them in the, uh, drop them in the comment section below. Other than that, I appreciate you for watching. Peace and love, you guys.